So hey, I'm Dave Whitney and welcome along to this lesson. This one's all about theory, okay? This one's a very, very straightforward lesson where we're going to learn about building chords from a scale. Okay, now this to me is, I would consider this fundamental. Uh, without this kind of information, I would, I just see you as groping around in the dark, in the musical dark, okay? Which is a very slow way to progress with your playing. Uh, it's one thing to spend all your time practicing the guitar, but if you don't know why or what you're practicing, then uh, once again, it's kind of like groping around in the dark. And, uh, and for me, when I think back to my own personal history, my advancement uh, was greater when my understanding of what I was doing was greater. So this is what this is all about, I believe. Uh, give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, and uh, there you go. So, we're going to start off uh, for this one, we are going to use a major Ionian scale. This is just your simple major scale, starting on the root note of the of the scale, and yeah. So we'll use G, okay, as our foundation note for our scale, and this will be a G major scale. It will have the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G, okay. Again, G, A, B, C, D, E. F sharp and G. Okay, so write those down on a piece of paper. Uh, and under each one of those notes, write a Roman numeral starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, for the F sharp. So you've got that written down on a piece of paper. Okay, now what is a chord? Okay, let's first of all start by defining a chord. A chord is three or more notes. Okay, three or more notes um, played in combination. That is a chord. Now, uh, an arpeggio is simply the notes of that chord played separately. So, building great arpeggios is a product of a chord knowledge, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, if you want to build those, uh, those really intricate uh, Alan Holdsworth style arpeggios and things, then, uh, then you better understand what's going on underneath those and, and this is what we're talking about. Now, you've got that. Now, so what we're going to do is start with a very simple chord, right? The simplest chord we can make, which is a one, three, five chord. Now, when I talk about one, I talk about the last note we're going to play, which is G, right? Now, this will be the first chord. When I talk about three, I talk about a third up from that, yeah? which in this case is B. When I talk about fifth, I talk about the fifth note up from the lowest note, which is D. So I have G, B, and D. Okay, and I'm going to do it all on one string, so it's super obvious what I'm doing. Okay, so what we're going to do is for each of the notes in the scale of G major, we are going to add the third above that note and the fifth above that root note. So, for instance, we would end up with our first chord, uh, like the, the Roman numeral 1 would be uh, the first chord in the key, which would be G major, which is G, B, and D. And why is it major? Because there are two whole steps between the root note, G, and the third note, B. G, whole step to A, whole step to B. Okay? That's why that's the case. So that, that's called a major third. Yep. And it has that happy sound, that everything's all right sound, as opposed to the gloomy minor sound, okay? So that's a very basic way of looking at it. Once again, I never know who's watching this, so if you go, that's so simple, it's, that, it wasn't for you, okay? Now, on the second note of the G major scale, which is A, okay, we are going to do exactly the same. We are going to add a third above A. Now, we're going to use only the notes in the G major scale only the notes in the G major scale, which means sometimes the th interval between the root and the third will be a minor third, which means only a whole step and a half step, okay? And that's the case in this particular chord. We start off with A, we add a third above our root note, which is C, right? Because C is in the key of, uh, of G. And then we have E as our fifth, A, C, and E. So that's an A minor, because the A to the C is a minor third. A, C, E. OK, 
Okay, so we have our first two chords. Remember, we're just building these chords on the notes of the G major scale. Okay, each note of the scale is the foundation for a chord, and each chord is simply the root note, the foundation note, a third above that, and a fifth above the foundation note. So, our third chord would be built off G, A, B, okay? And we would once again be using only the notes of the G major scale, G, um, sorry, B, D, and F sharp are going to be our three notes. B, right, so from B we go up to C, to D, that's our third, that's a, that's a third above the root, then we go up E, F sharp, that's our fifth. So we have B, D, and F sharp. Now once again, that's a minor third here. And the, get, and the distance between our root and our fifth is what we call a perfect fifth. If you're wondering what a perfect fifth sounds like, it's like, you know, the beginning of uh, Mamma Mia by, by uh, Abba. <laughs> well, that's a terrible example, I know. Anyway, so we have our, our third chord. So, so far we have G, B, and D, A, C, and E, B, D, and F sharp, okay? Now, our fourth note in the key of G is G, A, B, C. So, we build a chord off the C note, that's our, that's our foundation note. Once again, we go to the third note, up from that, in the key of G, right? From C, uh, from, um, C sorry, to E. Yeah. And our fifth note will be G, so C, E, and G. Now, it's a major chord because we have two whole steps between our root and our third, and a perfect fifth. Okay. So, that is a, uh, is a C major chord. So we have G major, which is G, B, and D. We have A minor, which is A, C, and E. B minor, which is B, D, and F sharp. We have C major, which is C, E, and G. The next chord starts on the D note, which is the fifth note in the scale of G major. G, A, B, C, D. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, once again, we start on the D, we go up um, um, a third to the F sharp, and then a fifth. A. So here we have D, F sharp, and A. Now, once again, the distance between the root and the third is two whole steps. So it's a major chord. So this one is D major. So we have G major, which is G, B, and D. We have A minor, which is A, C, and E, which is the second chord. The third chord is B minor, B, D, and F sharp. Fourth chord is C major, C, E, and G. Fifth chord is D major, D, F sharp, and A. The sixth chord, which is also the relative minor chord, is an E minor chord. It uses E, G, and B as the three notes. E to G is a minor third. It's a whole step and a half step on the guitar, or three frets. Okay. Then the fifth yeah, is a perfect fifth. Okay, that's the sixth one. So the seventh one right, is slightly different. Okay, the seventh starts on F sharp, the seventh note. On, in the key of G major, um, and uh, has A and C as its third and fifth. Now, C is what's called a flattened fifth. It's not a perfect fifth above our foundation note, which is F sharp. If it was, it would sound like that, but it sounds like this. third and our root, it's a minor third again, it's a whole step and a half step. Okay, so F sharp, G, A is our third, uh, B and C is our flat fifth. So this is called a minor flat five chord. This is F sharp minor flat five. Okay, so no matter what key we play in, those will be the chords that we use. Uh, the sequence of chords, a major chord, followed by a minor chord, 
followed by a minor chord, followed by a major chord, followed by a major chord, followed by a minor chord, followed by a minor flat 5 chord. Okay, and then back to our root note, right? Now, all that's really left to do is to play those together. So I'm going to do it down here. Okay. I'm going to play a very simple, simple chord structure, one that is very easy to see the change in. I'm going to play on the D string in the 5th fret with my 3rd finger, the G string in the 4th fret with my 2nd finger, and the B string on the 3rd fret with my 1st finger. And just play those 3 notes. Now you can hear root, 3rd, 5th. That is the G major chord. Now, if I wanted to make that minor, my 2nd finger is in control of that department. I could just move take it off and maybe make a bar across the third fret with my first finger and now it's minor so G major G minor okay if I wanted to make it minor flat five right I would probably play the uh, the fifth fret on the D string with my little finger I would replace my third finger because I don't want to stretch out too far or I could stretch out too far second finger and my first finger. My second finger would move down to minor. My first finger would move from fifth to flattened fifth. Okay, so. So I would have that. So there's only really three shapes that I would need to know to be able to play all these chords. That was the major shape, the minor shape, and the minor flat five shape. Okay, so. In order to play all the chords in the key of G major, I simply need to start here on, on the G note, yeah, on the third fret. Move everything up a whole step to A and change the second finger from major to minor, A minor. Move that up a whole step to B minor. Move it up a half step to C. Put my, first finger, uh, my second finger back in as a major position. Yeah. So I have C, then I have D, moved up a whole step. Yeah. Then I have E minor, yeah. then I have F sharp, minor flat 5, and I'm back to my root note, G. So I'll just play through them slowly. Chord 1, chord 2, chord 3, chord 4, chord 5, chord 6, chord 7, and back to my root again. Easy. Now it doesn't matter what key you play in, everything just transposes. It's no different to bar chords. Now you can just play the same thing but just move it around the guitar and it works. So if I was to change the key from G to A, okay, it's a different key, it has different notes. It has the notes A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, and G sharp. But it doesn't really make a difference. You just start on the A and go up through the exact same shapes you were using before. Yeah, and you can start using that. I hope it's been helpful. I hope maybe you've learned something from it that you didn't know before. Okay. And what I'll do is in the next video I will talk about how we expand on that into other realms because it's that's just the beginning. Okay, we'll take it another couple of steps. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Dave Whitney, or I still am Dave Whitney, and hopefully will be in the next video. And uh, thanks for watching.